In this series, we trace the lost railway lines of Lancaster and Morecambe. We begin with Lancaster Green Air to Caton. Lancaster Green Air Station was opened in June 1848 by the Morecambe Harbour and Railway Company. It was later run by the Little North Western Railway and then the Midland Railway, before passenger services ceased in 1966. So this was the site of Lancaster Green Air Station. To the west was the connecting curve which took the line to Lancaster Castle Station. There was a junction where the main line went over the Greyhound Bridge behind me, under Carlisle Bridge towards Morecambe. But today we're heading east, following the line along the south bank of the Loon towards Caton. There's very little left of Green Air Station today. The area was converted into a park in 1978 and this stone was laid to commemorate that. However, if you look at the rounded edge of the stone, it's tempting to think that maybe it came from a platform of a railway station, perhaps Green Air Station itself. It would be nice to think so. Also located in the park is this old goods crane, which was brought from Hornby Station further up the line. We now pass under Skirton Bridge, noticing as we go the two concrete extensions on either side designed to stop steam from billowing up onto the road above, and also the original bridge number on one of the pillars. When the railway opened in 1849, this passageway led to a promenade area along the southern bank of the Loon, just next to the railway line. And in this book, Railways Around Lancaster, is an account from a contemporary observer who watched the opening of the railway on October the 31st. I arrived at Green Air Station a little before 1pm. On reaching the station, I found it ornamented with a great number of flags. In the station was a train consisting of seven coaches and two locomotives on the front. Just after one, with the firing of small guns, ringing of bells, the clash of drums and to the sound of trumpets, I was off on the first train to Wennington. As we passed under Skirton Bridge and up the side of the Loon, spectators were gathered also on Caton Road and Ladies Walks. They waved as we passed. It's little wonder that people were celebrating the arrival of the railway in this part of Lancaster because with the railways, came jobs. To the east of Green Air was a network of sidings, goods sheds and factories, including the enormous complex of Lancaster carriage and wagon works. Although now the site of a private business, there are occasional heritage visits and there is plenty to see. Workshops, railway sheds, a water tower, staff accommodation, and even remnants of the site's own narrow gauge railway. The site was the home of the Lancaster Wagon Company Limited, and construction began in 1864, with the first railway wagons rolling out the following year. Carriages were sold all over the world, including South America, Egypt, Russia, South Africa, India, France, Italy, Belgium, as well as the UK. The works even produced a royal train for King Edward VII in 1903. The carriage works closed in 1908, bringing to an end a chapter in Lancaster's railway history. The sidings from the railway came as far as the old power station, which was fuelled with coal brought by the railway trucks. We're heading back now from what's now this industrial estate to the former track and following the line eastwards. Our next stopping point is the Lancaster Canal Loon Aqueduct, 
Designed by John Rennie and opened in 1797, the railway line passed underneath this magnificent structure, which was built to carry the Lancaster Canal over the River Loon. It stands 61 feet tall. So we've come up onto the top of the Loon Aqueduct. There's a lovely view from here, but we've not come to see the view. We've come to take a look at this. Carved into this lintel on the top of the aqueduct, the name W. Abbott, and then the letters LN, W. R, and the year 1853. The Little Northwestern Railway, which was extended in 1853, carved by one of the workmen. We leave the Loon Aqueduct now and continue our journey east. Next stop, Holton. When the Lancaster Rail Bridge was upgraded in 1912, the old bridge was moved here to Holton, where it provided improved access between the station and the village. Back on the line we now come to the splendid remains of Holton Station, where the station building and one of the platforms still survive, today housing the local university rowing club. Standing on the platform, it's not hard to imagine that you're waiting for the service to Wennington to come pulling into the station. To the rear of the station, there is a surviving goods shed. But neither of these buildings are the originals that were in place when the line was opened. At 5.20am on the morning of April 3rd, 1907, the Hesham to London St Pancras boat train was passing when a spark from the wheels set fire to a wagon of naphtha stored at the rear of the station. The fire brigade from Lancaster were unable to cross the narrow bridge from the village. Station staff tried frantically to put out the flames with water from the river. But the wooden station buildings were completely engulfed. A train was sent from Lancaster with 30 railway workers to help fight the fire with water from the river. But it was too late. By 9am the station and goods yard were completely destroyed and had to be rebuilt. As we go deeper into the Loon Valley, the railway crosses the river twice on impressive viaducts at the beauty spot, the Crooker Loon. Well, we're here at the Crooker Loon and we've stopped underneath this old railway bridge. Nice solid stone construction, but lined with brick across the vault of the bridge there and blackened with the soot of many, many trains. We now enter the village of Caton, where the original station house still survives. Built in the Swiss style, this is now a private residence. Opposite the station house is a surviving goods shed, which rather unusually has been turned into a church. The line continues eastwards from here, through Hornby, towards Wennington. So we've reached the end of our journey from Lancaster Green Air to the village of Caton. We've seen how the Green Air line connected up the city with the villages of the Loon Valley, how it brought jobs to Lancaster and supported industries. 
We're heading back to Lancaster now, so we'll see you next time on Lost Railways of Lancaster and Morecambe. So you arrive in Lancaster from Skipton on the Green Air Line, you come out of the station and what is the first thing that you see in front of you? Very clever piece of marketing. <laughs>